Hey guys, today we're gonna get really dramatic! Hey guys, today we're gonna go through how to onboard a new employee into SAP, how to create a new user, do new defaults, etc., sign the licenses and all that good stuff. Before I start, I wanted to say I create new videos for every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, especially if you don't come to YouTube all the time, it'll send you an email so you don't miss any videos. Chances are you've had to add a new user to SAP and maybe you didn't know how to do it and you ended up having to ask your SAP partner or you just didn't know how to do it and you took a guess and you have some weird user created in your system. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is go to the employee master data, human resources employee master data. I'm just gonna add one for myself. Add Mike James Taylor. I'll put my full name. So you can put the name there. <clears throat> you can see job title, position, all these other things are gonna be stored just as informational. You don't really need to fill them out. So yeah, places to store all these various pieces of information, home address, work address, a small photo there, uh, linked vendor, email. You can have membership, which is related to data ownership authorization. Administration has some absences, education review, previous employment timesheets, personal information, finance remarks, and some attachments. I'm not gonna go through those. You can go through the SAP help to see what they all mean. I do this, I click add. You wanna make a new user? Yes. So this is gonna make Michael based on my first name. This, you can kind of do a couple different ways. You could go E, you can make an E number, whatever you want. If you have a lot of, a lot of users, you don't necessarily wanna call it like Mike and then you might run out of it, or run out of uh, you know different user codes. Um, but in this case, I'll just go Mike say Mike Taylor. Um, you can bind this with a Microsoft Windows account. I'll show you this afterwards with a single sign-on. You have to turn that on in another place. Employee, it'll automatically blank to the employee master data. That's why I do the employee master data first. Mobile phone number, mobile device ID, that's for the Business One app. Fax comes from employee as well, branch, department, they all come from um, employee master data too. What I'll do then is I'll go password, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then leave change password at Lux login checked. And that means when I go to log in, it'll be one, two, three, four. And uh, then I can set my own password. So you can just let the user set their own password according to your security, password security settings. Add here, go to the last one. So you can see Michael James Taylor, all this stuff. It links user code here, sales employee. I have one already, but I can define a new one there. I'll link this to myself. So I have an associated, whoa. I have this associated to another one. So maybe I'll just make a, uh, I'll just make a Michael, I'll just put whatever. I'll put another one in here. We're gonna go John Jones, update. And uh, we can go back to the user code. We'll do defaults now. So the defaults here are just for this user or it can be for a group of users. So we can make a new one. Let's just say we're gonna assign them to the default. Default might have like a set of settings that you wanna use, but you can also make separate ones just for a particular user. So you can have uh, different addresses just for that person. Default, time format, date format, decimal settings, all these different things. The sales employee, if it's not already set warehouse, cash on hand, accounts, tax codes, etc. Use warehouse in a address in AP documents. That's very useful to have just as a general thing. Display, skin style, you can choose one. You don't have to set any of these. I'll usually set this to a font size just to default it to something bigger than 10. I find 12's okay. Some people actually find 12 too big. It depends on your monitor. I usually have a bigger one just for showing uh, in my videos. A background you can set, um, different printing options. So you can have certain cut, uh, certain users that want automatic printing or automatic emailing on particular documents. You can set it there. Uh, credit card GL accounts linked here, which is nice. And you can have different attachment paths per user. So that's pretty cool too. So you can set these however you want and associate them with that. Again, you can have one per or one per branch or et cetera. Uh, super user, we'll just, we're not gonna set a super user actually because we're gonna do uh, authorizations later. Um, you can set the services here. 
I didn't really talk about this. These are some basic things. You can see these in uh, the U, uh, SAP help. The one I'd probably say is change this to 9999 because the screen locking every 30 minutes is kind of annoying. All this is pretty good. Display, you can set this particularly for uh, languages or color or font size, but this is usually set by the default. I'll usually do default rather than doing an individual one per user, but the users can set their own defaults as well. So the next thing you wanna do is um, set their form settings. So you can copy form settings and this will take all the form settings from one user and copy them and override it for this user. So you wanna make sure that you do that so that that user has all of the form settings that one of your super users has. So in here, I'm gonna copy from Stuart. So I just have to click Stuart and then click copy. It'll copy user preferences, message preferences, tooltip preview preferences and everything. Copy, copy forms exist, continue. So if that user is just like another user, say it's a sales user, you can copy from another sales user who has some time in SAP, you know they've customized the form settings. You can copy that over to the new user and uh, they'll have the same form settings so their screens will look the same. The next thing you wanna do is assign a license. So you're gonna go modules, administration, uh, modules, administration, license, license administration. And I don't believe I have one, but you'll have a pro license or a limited license and you go to that user, Mike, <clears throat> and then you give them one of the licenses. Again, in this case, I don't have one, but it would be like this. Here, you'd sign one pro. And then what I like to do is just assign SAP add-ons, workflow, B1I, and SDK tools. Just do that so I never have to think about it. So I know that that user is totally covered. So I'd click update. I'm not gonna do that right now. It would take my license. I only have one license on this system. Once you've set the licenses, that sets the outer boundaries of what that user can do. So if they're limited CRM, they only get a specific thing. They can't see specific settings and they cannot ever do certain things. So I brought up the license matrix here. So you can see pro, limited, limited logistics, limited financials. You can always switch between these through cla three classes and you can upgrade any of these three classes over to a pro. Pros can do everything, but you can see limited CRM can only do specific things. So if you go down here to, oh, sales. Okay, so limited CRM can view invoices, but can't make them. Logistics can make invoices, but say can't do quotes, etc. So this says what the outer bounds that are even possible for that user to do. And from there, it's gonna close this. I'll attach that also to the, um, the references for this video. From there, you can now, so if you set the outer bounds of their permissions, you can come in and do the authorizations, modules, administration, system initialization, authorizations, general authorizations. You yourself have to be a super user. If you're not a super user, then you won't be able to do these settings. Scroll down, find Mike. Then we're gonna look at this, this giant matrix here. I'll kind of set this up so I'm not gonna cover it with my face. So what I would normally do is either copy this from one user to another one. So it looks like you can't just copy and drag it anymore. So I click here, copy user authorizations to Mike. Let's say, go to Mike, copy user authorizations. This should, yeah. Then so you can pick Debbie and click okay and it'll copy it over. They changed that a little bit and then it'll give me the same authorizations as Debbie had. Um, so if it's some, if it's a user that already has a specific, like if a user is a copy of another user, it's very easy. Just click on the new user, click copy, copy authorizations, and then click that user, and it'll set them the same way. They could be in a group as well. So if they're set in an authorization group, then they'll get that authorization. Uh, or you can go through manually. So you, usually what I'm gonna say is do full authorization down at the bottom and then restrict the various things you don't wanna see. But if you say, I'm gonna be really tough on this, and then you go, okay, now you can use sales orders. Perfect, well, you're screwed and you're not gonna be able to do anything. This is so ridiculously restrictive because there's so much stuff in the administration that you're not gonna see. 
So the thing you're gonna be really stuck on is the numbering series. If you see a, a warning, something like uh, docu no document numbering series exists or something like that, that means you've given them no authorization to any numbering series and they can't access any of them. So you can set different numbering series and set authorizations to them and then that'll allow users to use different numbering series. But again, go full authorization I'll collapse it here and then restrict specific things and then get more restrictive. I've included down here the authorization guide. So you can see here that it has every authorization and an explanation of what exactly it does. So this is a really good document and I'll include this in the reference for this video too. So this one really helps me. It's a little bit out of date, but uh, it, it works really well too. Once you set that user, you can also log in as them and then try it. Um, but again, if you're just starting with authorizations, I honestly would bias towards more permissive. Unless you have something very specific they wanna do, I don't find users really go out of their way to, to do things they shouldn't. Obviously, if you give too much control, the user can cause a lot of damage. You know, they'll change things, they'll move stuff around, they'll add payment terms and things that they shouldn't add, and that can cause big issues. One of the last things you wanna do is copy all of your background information and the timeouts to all your users. I think I mentioned this when I was making the default, just to make sure. System initialization, general settings, go to display, oh, font and background, switch this, SAPBO logo gray. So I'm gonna set that, make sure centralize is set there, services, Screen lock time in minutes, you want this to be 9999. Typically, most people don't want it to lock every 30 minutes, it gets really annoying. Click update, uh, you change at least one setting in Windows. Uh, new users, I'm gonna click all users and it should override their settings. Again, if you don't necessarily have the background and the screen locking in your defaults, you can just switch that for all users that way. The last thing I'm gonna cover is single sign-on. The nice thing about single sign-on is it allows you to log in to SAP without entering a username and password. This is very convenient as long as your computer has like a screen timeout or something like that so that you will not have somebody just walking in and your SAP is just totally unlocked. Unless it's a secure office and you just wanna do that. Single sign-on just allows you to bind an SAP user account to a Windows user account. And if you're logged in as that user, any company that you go to log into, it just assumes that you are that user you're linked to, and then it'll let you log in. So first thing you need to do is enable it centrally. You need to get to your, cent your control center so normally it's gonna be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash the name of your SAP server colon port 3010 and then forward slash control center. Assuming you have all default ports and stuff. Um, if you don't know how to get here, you probably don't wanna do this, so contact your SAP partner. But if you do have the B1 site user password and you know what this is, you'll kind of land here, go to security check enable single sign-on and then click update. What that's gonna do is any user logging in has to be associated with a Windows account. If they don't, if they aren't associated with a Windows account in that database, the database company won't show for them at all. Okay, you can manually type in the database name and the user login as long as you don't check this box. You can manually type everything in to get in as a super user but most users won't be able to do that. They won't necessarily know the exact database name, etc. So once you have the enable single sign-on checked and updated, I'm not gonna update it, I don't wanna screw things up for me. You wanna go back, modules, administration, setup, general, users. Then you need to go to each of the users and enter a domain Windows account. So in my case, it'd be Mike. And then just push update. So you want your exact domain user here and it'll validate it so that it is a real user. As soon as you enable both of these things, like <clears throat> you can pre-bind the Microsoft accounts before enabling single sign-on, so I would do that. And also recreate your test database because again, your test database will uh, disappear to those users if you don't bind it with a Microsoft Windows account. So if you don't have it bound, if you don't have it bound for any of that, any of the databases, even if the user has a good connection, they won't see anything. They'll just have blanks there. So then you would push update and you're done. 
So all you need to do then is send the user, in a case me, the username is Mike and the initial password is 1234. I'll be prompted to log in and my user will already be ready to go. So I can start training and running through the materials with your business processes that you already have documenting your own process or you can go through the SAP Learning Hub and learn generic SAP processes. I hope you have some documentation that shows your processes to help onboarding. Every user and every, well, every customer has different processes. So giving them a generic sales process is not good enough for an ERP system. You should have internal videos or an internal document that gives you the basic processes so that a user can understand or you need to have them shadow and work with somebody that is an SAP user so that they learn. Don't just leave them alone to figure out their own processes. You're gonna break a lot of things and it doesn't help that user to get up to speed very quickly. But at least my video shows you how to make the new user regardless of training. So don't forget, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, especially if you don't come to YouTube all the time. It'll send you an email whenever I make a new video. I make new videos Mondays, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time every week. If you have a particular topic, put it in the description below. Resources and everything will be in the description below this video. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for all the feedback. If you want to connect with me, go to linkedin.battleshipcobra.com and connect. If you have questions, I can do limited messages where I point you in the right direction. I can't do a lot of support there, guys. I can point you in the right direction. I can't fix error messages. I can't. I'm sorry. There's too many messages at this point. But I'll do my best to reply, to say hi, and to point you in the right direction if you have a generic question or something really simple that I can answer via email where I don't have to see your system. So thanks very much again. See you next week. Bye for now.